Okay, law of timing. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this time together to preach with lead us and guide us in great discussion time and uh, um, edify us and, and, and um, ignite and continue to burn the fire of leadership inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. All right, today we're going to talk law of timing, and I do not, yeah, this one, I do not have anything printed for you, so we'll just... Do you want me to do that real quick? Discuss. Well, I mean, we can discuss while I print them off. Do you want... Yeah, this this is my sheet. It's uh, not It's not the... Um, oh, yeah, he, he has one just to answer. I, I can... No, you guys can have this. Well, hold on a second. I have to start, though, because I only have one. Okay. <laughs> so, when to lead is as important as what to do and where to go. Timing is often the difference between success and failure in an endeavor. Okay, I'll start with that and I will um, give a little example that we can discuss. When to lead is just as important as, as where to go and what to do. Um, Winston Churchill, not, not a tremendous historian, but my understanding is Winston Churchill um, tremendous leader with foresight. He saw the what was coming in the world. He saw um, the potential that Germany had yeah. to become a very vicious uh, machine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I won't say the timing when he spoke that, that the timing was wrong, it was just that the people didn't want to accept it. Kind of like British people. Right. Kind of like uh, when Jeremiah spoke, the prophet Jeremiah spoke. Um, it's con is, that, is it goofing up on you? Yeah. I think the toner is out. The toner is out. Yeah. Uh, but when Jeremiah spoke, it wasn't the timing. Um, he just. People didn't want to listen. How do you get to the Tonerones? They didn't want to accept it. How do you get to the Tonerones? I don't know. I don't even know where it's at. Got a trick. I should be. I should just flip down. Right there? No. That's, That's paper. paper. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, because if you take it and you shake the toner and put it back in, it usually. Oh, okay. It usually will. Yeah, I don't even know what kind of toner is in it. If it's a cartridge or. What? I can see it, but I can't. I don't know if I can. It's probably from the side. Okay. All right. But Jeremiah spoke, and um, the people just simply didn't want to hear it. <laughs> so. My understanding, Winston Churchill kind of had a time um, where he was pushed aside. Am I right? I'm not too familiar with that. I think you know, there was a time he was kind of pushed aside. Not that he didn't still try or endeavor a little bit, but he wasn't in the forefront in a position to really maneuver things. He had to speak what he saw. He used the influence that he did have, spoke in the connections and in the network that he did have, and then he had to leave it lay. And I think, and the reason, let me, I'll go ahead and fast forward, the reason we know Winston Churchill as we know him today, and why we, there's so many, he's quoted so many times, and acknowledged as a hero in the world, is because when Germany and the Nazi uh, regime came to power and people began to see what Churchill was saying came to pass, then they called on Winston Churchill mm -hmm. to lead them. And then he rose to the forefront again and they were dependent on his choices in what to do and when to do it, 
because he was the one speaking it before anybody else saw it. It's very, the law of timing here. Um, so Greg Watson was right when he stepped in. We are going to somehow maneuver politics into this discussion. The law of timing. We are a couple days away from seeing potentially what our next four years are going to look like. As far as we know. You know, we can't see, we don't know beyond that according to our current system. If things go as planned, there will be a new leader in this nation elected. And they will, you know, January 20, 21st, somewhere around in there of uh, 2017, they will officially be inaugurated. Timing. Many of us in our circles, albeit however small they are, we have preached, we have spoke, we have talked, we have said this is coming, this is what can happen, and many, 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 many people don't want to hear it. They either reject it because they don't want to think about it. Like I know some people that just don't want to think about it, so they don't talk about it. It's not that they don't believe you. It's just that they don't want to believe that they're going to have to change their lifestyle as they know it. And so it's, uh, you know, a survival technique. Denial. They just deny. Just, I don't want to talk about it. We have some that deny it because they abs they don't believe it. They think, like they thought Winston Churchill was crazy. It's not going to happen. It's ridiculous. There's so many people that we talk to, and it's like talking to a wall. Because they're set. It's almost as if the scripture has come to pass that there are people who continue to die, deny God in such a way that he turns them over to a reprobate mind. And the scripture says that, that they would even believe a lie. Whoever becomes the leader of this nation, now the, the Congress, the House, and the Senate are going to be important too in how this happens, in, in how this next few years play out. But all we can do right now is teach, speak, remain founded, remain true, keep our hope in the Lord. And when time comes, some of us will be pushed to the forefront. Some of us will be called upon to lead in different businesses, different organizations, maybe churches, maybe ministries, maybe government, different facets. However, it could be that it's not as pleasant as what some of our current leaders get to experience. And what I mean is today when you are in top leadership, in many different, whether Christian leadership or secular leadership, um, there's there's a lot of perks that come with it. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of burden. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like um, John Hagee, Glenn Beck talks about where he talked to John Hagee one time, and and Hagee told him, he said, you know, one day you 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 open the newspaper and you read this article about this horrible man. It's just evil and manipulative. And, and then you finish the article and realize they were talking about you. Um, that's the kind of leadership I'm talking about. Where we're going to be placed in positions to where we can't bow. No matter what the cost. Where we have to hold our ground. And we have to just say, look. 
If you accept me as I am, so be it. If you don't, so be it. Time. We don't know the time. We don't know when. We don't know how. All we know is in the scripture, Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, don't, don't stress about it. He said, because when you're in that moment, I will give you what to say. I will give you what to do. The spirit uh, that's inside of us will lead us into all truth. It will guide us. It's just going to become vital that in that moment we are sensitive enough to know what to do, when to do, and how to do it. We're also going to have to know what things to compromise on. And what I mean by that is there are certain things that aren't heaven and hell issues. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're just not. Yeah. Um, God gives man dominion over the earth. There are many forms of government in this earth. It just so happens that our form of government has been changing over the past several decades and is continuing to change dramatically uh, currently and could change even more dramatically. It's okay for us to, I'll use the word fight, voice, stand on certain issues like healthcare, for instance. It is, it's pretty much proven itself out. I mean, you'll still have people argue that it's still great, but it's proven itself out that it's a failing system. It's a failing system. Premiums are going up. Insurance coverage isn't that great. And nobody that I know of, I mean, you, you can find little pieces here and there maybe, but nobody that I know of uh, is getting better health care than we had before. It's actually... Or even more affordable. It, it's not more affordable. Right. Period. It's not more affordable. Right. That's out the window. Um, and actually, to be honest with you, um, from what I've seen with the person I know that works in the healthcare system, um, some of it's getting some of the healthcare is getting worse mm -hmm. because they're not able to take the time with patients to really care for them. So things are going to start being misdiagnosed. Things are start going to be, they're going to be missed, and they're just going to get you in and get you out. I'd be willing to say that this was all designed and crafted from the beginning. Well, it was planned to go this way. But you label it a certain way, so you've got people who are going to be yeah. on board uh, exactly. supporting you. Yeah, initially, I looked, oh, this might not be so bad, but then time goes on. Yes. And because there were phases of this plan that yes. was supposed to be implemented over time. Yes. So as time goes on, it's only yes. get worse, mm -hmm. not better. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here's what's in there. Okay. See, we're, we're trying not to go here, <laughs> but you're exactly right. And and that's what I'm saying about where, where we're going to have to know what lines to walk. Our number one goal is to, Jesus said, to preach the gospel. That's our goal. The rest of it is he gives us the authority to choose. And we kind of do this. We navigate through our systems of government, our economic system. Again, this democratic republic that we have had um, is not salvation. Right? No, there's no salvation. Exactly. Other name. Exactly. So no matter what form of government we take on, we can stand for the form we want. He, God gives us that ability of choice and dominion. But when it boils down to it, we've really got to navigate this out and not somehow not allow our personal preferences Maybe even our own, what we know really to be the best. I mean, let's, let's face it, it, a good solid 
democratic republic is much better than a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. Much better than social socialism, mm -hmm. communism has never worked for the benefit of the people in world history. The only thing that comes close that I am aware of is when uh, Joseph took command in Egypt. That was a socialistic type situation. Mm -hmm during that time period mm -hmm. ordained by God for the people to save them, yeah. to save them yeah. because of the famine that was coming up on the land. Now, that doesn't give us an excuse for socialism because they were in a dictatorship. Okay? They were more of a, and really, and, and again, I haven't studied this all out, but I would call it more of a theocratic dictatorship. In other words, it was religiously driven. Egypt was very religious, <coughs> driven Pharaoh. by their gods. Pharaoh was. And he was the, God, yeah. the dictator mm -hmm. in, in the land of all these gods. And so for, for them in that season, it was God ordained to maneuver that way to see them through. Uh, the famine. Uh, the, the communism, the communism that took place was it in Antioch. The actual community of Christians that was a form of communism. Right. However, that was not government orchestrated. Right. And that's the big difference, yeah. because. If the government would step out of the way and allow the church to function as the church, mm -hmm. you would have a willing system of compassion and humanitarianism that is biblical. You see what I'm saying? Right. So right. as the church, we are to help the poor, feed the hungry, have all things common. Uh, we are the body to be there for one another. It was never intended for that to be forced upon the people. Right. By the government. Right. So you are right. But it wasn't a form of government. It was a form of willing compassion and willing obedience. Um, so times, times are changing. Times are... Um, it, this is going to be very vital for us to understand. Um, you guys will have to, let me get my phone out so I know the so I know the time. <laughs> Ten thirty. Um, the wrong action at the wrong time leads to disaster. Okay, so that's going to be important. Give examples when you have made an action decision and the timing was not right. What happened? Did your leadership suffer? Did your people suffer? And this will help us to know the importance of timing. Mean, has, has anybody have a situation where you made the right decision at the wrong time and it just kind of didn't go the right way? Something was not count. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. When I was, uh, I was in the Army and uh, we was uh, based in Tula supporting the efforts going on there. S4, and uh, I was on the night shift, and we was having trouble with one of the links, so I made a decision uh, to break the link, dump the comsec, and reload another comsec. You know, it was just kind of a, a test or a trial that, you know, to try to improve communications. Well, it so happens I interrupted a video conference call doing this that I was unaware of. Oh. You come to find out after the fact. They weren't very happy. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, my my leadership stood up for me, but you know, they won. They kind of wanted heads to roll, but they just kind of swept it under the carpet. You know, because it was an honest mistake. Sure. You know? Yeah. But yeah. So good intentions, horrible timing. <laughs> Wrong timing. That is a perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> the right thing at the wrong time. Or saying um, the 
consequences. Sometimes it's like, whoa! <laughs> mm -hmm. or, or you might think it'll be one way and it's like 10,000 times worse than you even thought it would be. Exactly. It, it's hard to tell what the consequences to our actions and decisions might end up being. Might end up being. Yeah. yeah. So. Especially when there is what I was called, you know, I'm not the only one, but knee jerk reactions sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, you just knee jerk reaction. What I do in this moment, it's it's kind of like um, you know. I think of the young man that that you know, he back a few years ago from Delaware County. Um, I don't know. You may remember the story when I tell you, but um, was coming back, got mad, was on his way back from a hunting trip, and got on top of a overpass or something and was shooting cars that went uh, through and he killed me. And um, drove home and the grandma, I think it was the grandma, hid the guns in the attic. Right? Not the right thing to do. Are you talking about locally? Yeah, yeah. 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 just oh, a few yeah. years ago. It was uh, a few years ago. Out on 69? Yeah, yeah, a few oh, yeah. years back. Hid the guns. Just knee jerk reaction. I mean, grandma, it, her immediate thought is for her grandson, not necessarily the crime. Yeah. And so they were, but because of her doing that, you know, they had to go through the process. Do we prosecute the grandma also? You know, she tampered with the evidence. Right. Yeah. Well, the first so, thing you were taught is this yeah. chaplain's coming on a crime scene. You don't, you don't yeah, touch. Exactly. You don't touch a thing on that crime scene. So sometimes your heart says one thing, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> need your reaction. Sometimes we have to be careful. That's why it's going to be very vital. And then again, here, here's what I believe. I, I don't think you're going to get it right every time, mm -hmm. but I do believe that if you do the little things right in your life, you, you practice with the little things. What you do is you begin to build internal core values that no matter what situation arises, those internal core values automatically kick in. So what I mean is if you see someone in front of you, and this is what I mean by a small example, someone in front of you, a hundred dollar bill slips out of their pocket at at Walmart and they're just moving along and you're like nobody's around what do you do there are people nobody's gonna know. Yeah, yeah there are people that would pick that up and keep it oh, we we know that so just like but, it. but <laughs> and so yeah <laughs> some may just leave it yeah. Yeah. but I don't want to get arrested you know? one thing that would happen probably by everyone in this room, would be to pick it up and say, hey, 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 you drop this. Why? Well, because we've worked and operated our lives now, this group has operated their lives in such a way that they have practiced these small things throughout their life that there's a core value built up. So that in that moment, when you do have to make an immediate decision, at least you've practiced enough throughout your life and built mm -hmm. who you are mm -hmm. through the help of God that most of your decisions can be made in a split second and can be the best decision possible with the best outcome possible. Not that we'll get it right every time, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I've been talking about these past five to ten years of what's possibly coming to this nation. And why it's going to be very important for us to have a steady, built-up value system that we live with and function with. And we have to be willing to get beyond ourselves because we're entering into a time that we're all going to have. And I, I would like to be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But this is how I feel right now. We're going to have to be willing to work inside a system 
that is very undesirable for us and not pleasant for us, but yet at the same time learn how to work within that system, staying true to our core values, staying true to the biblical mandate of preaching the gospel to the creature. And again, I go back to, and I don't know if you guys get tired of this or not, but Bonhoeffer, I mentioned it Wednesday, where he, he saw Germany, he saw Hitler coming, and there was someone, he was in a cafe, and there was some type of announcement made about Hitler, and everybody cheered and gave the Hitler salute. And Bonhoeffer, who was adamantly against Hitler, stood up and cheered with him. And his friend looked at him like, what are you doing? And he looked at his friend and said, basically, now's not the time. Just go with it. So they saluted knowing that if they didn't, they would immediately be marked and questionable. And so instead of drawing attention to themselves, mm -hmm. they compromised on something that wasn't a heaven or hell issue, went with the flow, bought themselves more time to hear and to navigate through their new scenery. Kind of the same idea, I think, when Paul said, I am to every man. Yeah. Yeah. When and all things to all Yeah, and all things to all people. When and weak, I'm weak to, to them, strong and yeah. strong. There, there are certain, again, there are certain things there is absolutely no compromise. Politically speaking, today, the act of abortion. Um, I know that people will say, well, what about this situation or that situation? I understand those arguments. Whatever we to decide, we are. But I, we are not the ones I can't play God. Right. I can't play God. That's the bottom line for me. I can't play God. There's options of adoption. There is. There's adoption. There's other. God is the giver of life. I can't play God. It, it's it's non-negotiable issue. I can't accept that. Um, the and then. The, the fact that um, someone would be adamantly supportive of a late-term abortion is godless, period, and barbaric. Mm -hmm. Those are the situations where we have to just stand and say, no, I can't. So that's where we are going to have Christian people in the medical field that are going to be challenged and they're going to have to make decisions and it's going to be very difficult for them. You see, they can work with government health care. Maybe difficult, maybe unpleasant, not satisfactory, not desirable, but they can work with it. <clears throat> but there's some issues that they can't. Mm -hmm. And when you're being demanded by the government and lawfully forced into practicing things that are uh, heaven and hell issues, mm -hmm. murder, mm -hmm. taking of innocent life, then there's some decisions to be made. The right action at the wrong time brings resistance. You may have the right action, the right decision. However, if the timing is not right, it will not work. Good leadership requires understanding. Understanding of the situation. Obtaining knowledge. Maturity. A leader's motives 
must be right, not selfish. It's another thing we're going to have to be careful of. And I was talking to uh, my nephew yesterday in the van. He's talking about, you know, um, feeling like he wanted to rap and do music and stuff, you know, and just feel it's like in him and God's, you know, really calling him to do this right now and things like that. And, and I told him, I said, there was a time I did that too, and, you know, and God had me doing it in that moment. And it was just a part of the path that I was on. I said, but the thing is, though, what we have to be careful of is we can be doing exactly what God wants us to do and then make it about ourselves instead of the plan. And I said, and I said, even with me, like in politics, it's very easy to start making it about me. Vote for me. I've got the answers, right? I said, so in all things, we have to have maturity. We have to check our motives. We have to constantly check ourselves. It's like right now uh, in this election, um, you know, you need some signs out. You know, you need some ads. You need, you need a little something out there to say, look, I'm running again. Um, and, you know, I'd appreciate your vote. But like in this election, I just, not out of arrogance, it just out of demographics and the situation, feel pretty confident in where I stand. I've got a few signs out, I've got a few things out. And every once in a while you think, well, I can do this or I can do this. But then I have to check myself because it's like, you know, you got to walk that line. Like, it's not about me. It's not about how many signs I can see of myself out there. It's not about how many times I can get my face in front of people with ads. It's not about how many pins I can hand out. You know what I mean? I can't make it about me. I've got to, I've got to do what I need to do, but I've got to always balance when am I crossing that line that I'm making it about my popularity more than God's plan. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it takes maturity. So our motives must constantly be checked to make sure that we're right, we're not selfish. Confidence. We must know what has to be done, which stems from you know that understanding of maturity. Again, understanding, knowledge, maturity about a situation. Then we begin to act with confidence, and we can say, "I know this needs to be done." You take Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln took executive authority. He took extreme executive authority. But it was because of the situation that our nation was in, he used his knowledge, he used his maturity, he used his understanding. He didn't have evil motives. He didn't say, oh, here's a great situation for me to obtain power. He said, this is something that is very sad. And you read some of his speeches on during the Civil War, it's pretty, um, pretty eye-opening into his heart. But he took that authority because of the situation and relinquished it when, he, when it came time. The problem we have today is we have selfish leaders that use catastrophe to grab authority. It's a difference. Decisiveness. Strong leaders make strong decisions and gain trust, experience, either through their own past or through the learning and the wisdom of others. Intuition, you know, the morale and the momentum. Timing, again, intuition. Preparation, if conditions are not right, leaders must create those conditions and set your team up for success. Now, again, some of these things can go sideways real fast if you don't have the understanding and the maturity. Especially preparation. If conditions are not right, think about that. If conditions are not right, leaders must create those conditions. You say that in the wrong crowd, right? Chest touch. <laughs> well, or you're going to get some Saul Alinsky types like Hillary Clinton that say, if the conditions are not right for me, then I will create the conditions. Right? Very manipulative. But as a leader, as a godly leader, if the conditions are not right, 
I'm going to create it. Well, what do I do? Well, you walk into a situation that's in chaos, walk into a situation that's in confusion. Uh, stop. Change the atmosphere. Pray. Just make everybody stop. Focus. Pray. Create an atmosphere where God can move. God cannot and chooses not to move amongst confusion. He's not the author of confusion. He's not the author of chaos. Right? So that's how we create the situation. We ask God to enter into the picture. We stop people. We stop the movement. If, you know, it's okay. Stop. Let's focus. Let's listen. Okay? That was very timely. Set yours up. All right. Um, all right. Next week it is ten fifty-two. Next week, uh, if the timing is right, we're going to be talking about the law of explosive growth. Ooh. Yeah. So when you live in a house of teenage boys and young men. Explosive growth. Um, that's what you see in the grocery store. That's right. right. <laughs> there is, uh, uh, what's that? There was, there's this one movie that <laughs> this, this little, this teenage boy is in a rock band called something like Exploded Diaper. Um, <laughs> like, Exploded Diaper. <laughs> All over the place. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to talk about is developing yourself, developing your team, developing your leaders. What actions are you taking? So, all right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. Pray that you will continue to give us discernment, lead us and guide us, show us the timing of your plan for our lives, when to act, where to act, how to act, Lord, what to say. Uh, when to compromise, when not to compromise, when to unify, and when to fight. Lord, we seek you and we look to you as we come closer and closer to the election of new leaders for our government. Lord, and you know more than we do the importance of, of this election and what's ahead of us, the decision that the American people make. It reminds me of the time when Israel was crying out that they wanted a king instead of being led by you. And, uh, Lord, you gave them what they asked for, and they suffered uh, for that. Because we, we say to you, we don't want your leadership. We want to place our trust and faith in the hands of a person. And we know that sometimes that can work well. If that person has the right heart, the right attitude, the right focus, is humble. Yeah, but we also know that it can lead to disaster if that person is prideful and arrogant and seeks power and money. So Lord, we ask that you would we ask that you would guide the voters. We ask that you would guide the election. And we ask that you would lead us and guide us and give us wisdom and discernment as those leaders are chosen and how we uh, shall live and go from here. In Jesus' name, amen.